All right, this class of the day, world history. That was the minute bell, right? Yeah. Okay. How's everyone's morning so far? How's everyone's morning? We have a good amount of information to look at today, and we have a cool activity after. Uh, but first thing first, uh, our timeline. Everybody have those? No. No? A few? No. It's fine. So this is what we're going to do. Whatever you have it, you can turn it in today. Uh, the last day to turn those in is next Tuesday. After that, I'm not accepting those. Yes, sir. Cool? Yes, sir. You guys have, what, like five days? What is it? Yeah, we have like, no, we have like seven days, sir. So quite a few days. No, so turn those in by Tuesday. You guys will have time to do that on Monday as well, right? You guys have a high day? So just one for today? Uh, two. Your name on there? What's up? Oh, this one's for the European theater. We're doing the specific one. Oh, yeah, okay. How about that, right? All right, cool. So, timeline, they're due when? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Cool. All right, so let's take out your notes, guys. We're going to take a few notes today. Everybody brought their laptops? Yeah, couple not. All right. Let's take out the notes. Take out your notes, guys. More notes. This is the last notes. And then, this is the last notes, actually. For the quarter. For the quarter. For the quarter. Promise. That's a week. That's good. <laughs> last notes. Back table, let's get those notes out. And it's not a lot of notes, actually. It's just more of me talking, I guess. <laughs> Everybody have their notes out? Oh, is that? So instead of doing the exit ticket today, we're going to do a bell word. So the question for our bell word is, what is something that has interested you so far in this World War II unit, and why? Here's some example, example you guys can look at. We have the Holocaust, we have the Nazi party. You can talk about any dictators or leaders throughout World War II, any major battles, such as like Pearl Harbor, Battle of Berlin, or any battles that we've talked about. We could also talk about any technology or weapons or strategies used in World War II, or any propaganda that we've talked about. You guys remember the gallery walk that we did? Any of those. 
So go ahead and take the next five to eight minutes to answer this question. Anyone have any questions on what you're supposed to be doing right now? No, no, so you're answering what is something that's interests you so far? Those are some examples that we've talked about. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are not writing this down, you guys are answering the question. A few more minutes, guys. Looks like everyone's almost done. <laughs> yeah? We yeah. need yeah. a few more minutes. share what they wrote down? No one? Do I gotta choose? 
Freddy, what would you write down? The Holocaust. The Holocaust? You think the Holocaust is crazy? Yeah. Why? Yes, for the Nazi action against Jews and against Jews. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Also, you pretty much said it was interesting because of the Nazi actions against the Jewish people and how uh, they treated the Jewish people. Cool. Anyone else want to show here? Um, I, I thought it was called the Oh, when they gassed the Jewish people yeah. in the bunkers? Yeah. In the hall during the Holocaust? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else on the chair? Mm -hmm. All right. So this, we're going to come back to this later on. All right. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. All right. So far in this unit, we've talked about post World War I and its impact on Germany, right? Treaty of size and hyperinflation and the Great Depression, right? We talked all about that. Uh, we also talked about Hitler's rise during Germany and the propaganda he used to brainwash all of the Germans during this time. We've also talked about Hitler's power and his invasion of Poland and the concentration camps that he's made for the Jewish people. And we also talked about the major battles, right? We did the timelines and we Look at each battle. So today we're going to be talking about D-Day, Hitler's death, and peace in Europe. You guys don't have to write this down. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. Please. So here's a map of Europe in 1944. Maybe just a year before the war ends. This lighter brown color is all of Nazi territory. This darker brown color is their allies. The green one right here, the green color is the allies, pretty much Americans, right? The British, the mm -hmm. French, Soviet Union. And this tan color down here is like neutral countries. They're pretty much out of the war, not involved. What can you guys tell me from this map? Who do you think is winning, or who do you think has gained a lot of control of Europe? The Nazis, right? It looks like the Nazis are winning the war in 1944. That's what it looks like, right? All right, uh, next slide, Mr. Martin. So D-Day, probably one of the most important battles to the Allies. Uh, D-Day was key to the overall Allied victory in World War II. I would write down the red, remember? Just write down the red. However, this victory came too late in the war to make a significant difference in the fate of Europe's Jews. More than five million had already been killed by D-Day. As Allied troops stormed the shore in northern France, the Nazis were deporting and murdering Hungarian Jews on a massive scale. The Jews of Hungary were the largest remaining Jewish community in occupied Europe at this time. Despite the victory during Operation Overlord, Jews would continue to be murdered right up until the D-Day victory. So go ahead, I'll give you a few minutes to write down the red. And then we're going to watch a short clip on uh, just a visual representation of D-Day and what it looked like and what the soldiers were doing. So go ahead and write this down. Just a little hint, this might be on the test. Maybe D-Day up here. Just let you guys know the test is already created, so it's ready for you guys for next Thursday. What's up? Are you paper for the timeline? Paper for the timeline. Yeah. You want to take notes though? Yeah. Timelines are due next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're
few more seconds. Take a picture, I'm gonna take a picture. <laughs> Let's watch the short clip. All right. So this is DJ. Hitler's death. In February of that year, the German Sixth Army moved deep into the Soviet Union and was defeated at the Battle of Stalingrad. Stalingrad, and the Germans hoped for a sustained offensive on both fronts evaporated. Then in June 1944, the Western Allied armies landed at Normandy, France, and began a systematically to push the Germans back towards Berlin. By July 1944, several German military commanders acknowledged their imminent defeat and plotted to remove Hitler from power so as to negotiate a more favorable peace. On April 30th, 1945, pulled up in a bunker under the headquarters in Berlin, Adolf Hitler committed suicide by swallowing a cyanide capsule and shooting himself in the head. Soon after, Germany officially surrendered to their allied forces, ending Hitler's dreams of a thousand year uh, reign. Er, right. 
So go ahead and write down in what's in red. What was that? What was the question? This pretty much ends the war in Europe. when you're finished like you know who it's going Everybody have this down? So this gives us a better understanding of what just happened. Uh, this is pretty much the end of the war in Europe. This is Europe 1945, the surrender of Germany. All of Allied forces pushed from both fronts, right? Just leaving Germany with this little territory. You guys can tell like the Allies finally won, right? You guys have been pushed, pushed. Any questions on this map? Next slide, Mr. Morton. So now that the war in Europe has finally ended, there's going to be peace now, conferences, peace treaties, all that good stuff. So the first one was made that unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany, the division of Germany and Berlin was into four occupational zones. Now controlled by the United States, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union. German civilians and prisoners of war will be punished for the war, partially through forced labor to repair the damage they caused to their country and to others. The Soviet Union agreed to participate in the United Nations with a guaranteed position as a permanent member of the Security Council. Stalin agreed to end the Pacific War against Japan three months after the defeat of Germany. The Potsdam Conference also happened, uh, pretty much prosecuted Nazis for war crimes. Uh, uh, return, uh, so pretty much all the land that Nazis took over, like they returned all that territory right back. They transported Germany's uh, economy from a pre-war heavy industry to more of an agriculture and light domestic industry. They decentralized, demilitarized, denazified, and made Germany more a democratic nation. 
So go ahead and just bring what's in red. Once again, once you're done, just put your pencil down. Will you have this down? No. A few more seconds. Picture. All right. Next slide, Mr. Morton. So that pretty much ends the one year up, right? Now they're in peace. They're divided during into four sections. But there's still war going on in the Pacific. We have, uh, we talked about Pearl Harbor already. We also talked about the U.S. propaganda. Most of you guys read that, Code Talkers, when they're doing the timelines. You guys also did your major battles throughout the timelines. Today we're going to be looking at important terms and events during the Pacific War. Also the Japanese bombing and Victory Japan Day. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. So you don't have to write this down. Just did anyone remember what they read about the Code Talkers when they read the timeline thing? Any, anyone? Did you guys remember when you had, uh, read about the Code Talkers? I don't remember what they were talking about. Yeah, I'm you guys remember a little bit? So pretty much, a like, Code Talker was a person employed by the military during wartime who used their knowledge of Native American languages as a basis to trans transmit code messages. Is my reading about that? Nothing that happened during the Pacific Theater were Japanese atrocities. Pretty much Japanese war crimes. So there are three events that I was reading about and looked at. Another thing was Japanese internment camps in the United States during World War II. About 120,000 people of Japanese uh, Ancestry, most of the in the Pacific Coast were forcibly relocated and incarcerated in concentration camps in the western interior of the country. So approximately two thirds of interns were United States citizens. Another important thing to know about is the Bushido way of the, way of the warrior. Bushido was followed by Japan's samurai warriors and revived by Japanese military during World War II. Many Japanese started to commit suicide rather than surrender. Surrendering would seem dishonorable. So, something important you guys gotta know is that these Japanese soldiers, they would rather commit suicide than take a prisoner from the Americans. Does that make sense? Just a way of their thinking during the war, right? Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. So this is going to lead us to the bombing in Japan. This pretty much helped the United States end the war. In August of 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
As a result, approximately 120,000 civilians died. Japan formally surrendered on September 1945. So go ahead and write down what's in red. Pop, pop, it's gonna be on the fence. On August 8th, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan and invaded Japanese occupied Manchuria. You guys were talking about Manchuria in World War One? No? Yeah, no, maybe. After Japan agreed to surrender on August 14, 1945, American forces began to occupy Japan. Japan formally surrendered to the United States, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union on September 2nd, 1945. So when did Japan surrender? September 2nd. All right. I want to remember that. Go ahead and write this down. We get a few minutes. You got this down again? Yeah. How about this bike table? Everything now? Miss Michael, this is the last time we're taking notes this quarter until we get back on spring break. I'm not sure if you want to write notes on Tuesday. You're good? Attention, attention, all students that are in the M building. If you do not have a class in the M building or on the outside balconies of the M building, please exit the building. You are serving classes and you should not be in the hallways or on the balconies. A few more seconds. Slide, Mr. Morton. So, this is where the bombings took place. Hiroshima, right here where this dot's at. Nagasaki, the invasion of Manchuria, right? Right up here. I know it's hard to see from here to see, but it's uploaded on Teams, so if you guys want to take a look at that later today, go right ahead. Remember, the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima, August 6th of 1945, and then Nagasaki, August 9th of 1945. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. So here are some pictures of Hiroshima before the bombing and right after the bombing. Crazy, right? Crazy. There's a, you probably see what, like two, three buildings after the bombing, the building probably all destroyed, half, half destroyed. It looks like a church in the Call of Duty. You guys see this? It's pretty crazy, right?
Remember, 120,000 civilians were, were killed during this bombing. Uh, next slide. Here's some more pictures after the bombing. Crazy how this used to be probably all buildings right here, probably buildings right here too, right? Now it's just dirt and leftover building material. Uh, next slide, Mr. Ward. So, we're going to answer this. Should we have dropped the bomb? Take the next five to ten minutes. Go ahead, five to ten minutes to write down your answer. Should we or should we have not? Go ahead, write, write your answer. There's no right or wrong answers. Just see whatever you guys think. A few guys are going to share your guys' answers in a bit. Let's write this down, guys. So, should we have dropped the bombs? There's no right or wrong answer, it's just what you guys think. What do you think about Mr. Morton? They should, we should do it before Russia does it on us. Yeah. I'll take a few volunteers first and then I'll pick uh, Aiden and Francisco to share. Few more minutes, guys. Keep writing. I want you to just put your pencil down. Drop the bombs? I think, yeah. Yeah, we should have? Okay. To help end the war? Yeah. So you said? Yeah. What else? You also said it was, an, it was unfortunately that so many people. <laughs> so you said it was unfortunately that so many people had to die, right? Right. Any, uh, 
Francisco, you want to share? What's your idea? I'm sorry? That we should have, okay, why? Because we would have everything. Yeah, we everything, okay. Did anyone say no to the drafting? No, everybody said yeah, we should have. So I wrote down, I honestly think we, we should have dropped the bonds as well. But it would have made a difference if we didn't drop the bonds. Today's role would have been way different. Um, that the bombing also sent a huge message to the world. That's what I think, right? To not mess around with the United States. And yeah, pretty much those are the points I wrote down. Any, anybody else want to share? No, all right. Next slide, Mr. Marcia, please. So now the war has finally ended. Victory Europe, Victory Japan Day. On May 8th, 1945, both Great Britain and the United States celebrate victory in Europe Day cities in both nations, as well as formerly occupied cities in Western Europe put flags and banners rejoicing in the defeat of the Nazi war machine during World War II. Victory in Japan, three months later came Victory in Japan to end the Pacific conflict with Japan. The news came in the evening of August 14, 1945. Victory over Japan Day would, would officially be celebrated in the United States. On that day, formally, surrender documents were signed aboard the USS Missouri and to Tokyo Bay in September 2nd, 1945. So go ahead and write down the red, just a sentence. Once you're done, just put your pencil down. All right, let's move on. Next slide, Mr. Morton. Here's some data from post-World War II stats, right? Pretty much, World War II resulted in an estimated of 55 million deaths worldwide. That's a lot of people. There's some testaments the United States lost, the Soviet Union, Germany, China, Japan, Great Britain. Uh, I would write down what's in red. Pretty much it says the aftermath of World War II was the beginning of a new era for all countries involved, defined by the decline of European colonial empires and stimulus rise of two superpowers, the United States, or the Soviet Union and the United States. 
top five is going to be on the test. I will write a star right next to your nose. So what's two superpowers rolled after World War II? Anyone? From the PowerPoint. Hmm. The Soviet Union, United States, right? Yeah. You're gonna say that? Yeah. I beat you to it? Yeah. Officially end of World War II. Yay. And they look over this again next year, right, Mr. Morton, for U.S. American history. Right. Say that again. They, they look at this again for yeah. U.S. Arizona. Yep. Yeah. Everybody has it down? Can I take a picture of this? You guys got it? All right. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. So here's some visual uh, images of how Europe looks like now. You know how I tell you that Germany was split into four sections? There's that. And here's a peace treaty signing with General MacArthur and the Emperor of Japan. Right there, remember, in the USS Missouri, Tokyo Bay. Got a few treaties right there. So that's going to write down here. Pretty much World War II is finally uh, pretty much put to bed. Then it's done now. Uh, next slide, Mr. Morton. So here's a to-do list. Turn in any missing assignments by Tuesday, March 1st. That's next Tuesday. That'll be your timelines or anything that needs to be in the grade book. You're also going to be doing a study guide day on that Tuesday. I'm going to hand out those study guides today so you guys can look at them this weekend. And you also have the opportunity to work on them on Tuesday. Next Thursday, March 3rd, is exam day. You guys were given, is it like an hour 45, Mr. Morton? It's just over an hour. Just over an hour to finish your exam. It's not, it's not hard. It's not. You guys are not going to be writing like three pages worth of stuff, multiple choice, sure or false, and three short answer questions. 
Pretty sure you guys can do the multiple choice questions in 10 or 15 minutes, if I'm being honest. True or false in five questions, in five minutes, I mean. Short answer, it might take you a little longer. But that's about it. So today, you guys are going to study, guys. You guys will have the chance to work on, look at them over the weekend, work on them on Tuesday. Also, work on your missing assignments this weekend, right? Everything is due Tuesday. Cool. Screen breaks around the corner. Now that leads us off to our last thing for today. Uh, next slide. So I told you guys to bring your laptops, right? How many people brought them? Raise your hand. All right, some of you guys might have been doing like a sketch or a draft on a piece of paper. So what we're doing today is create your own newspaper. I'm gonna show you guys an example. I made one too. You should be quiet in the back, please. So it must include a title, pretty much a headline, don't forget your name, the published date, right? The cost of your newspaper, be creative with it. Who's seen a newspaper before? What? Who, who has seen a newspaper before? What? A few of you guys? All right. I've seen a newspaper. All right. Include at least one drawing or picture. You guys are gonna be doing this on Microsoft uh, Word or Google Docs, it doesn't matter. Must include a main story, so you're gonna pick the story right, and then you're gonna summarize it within five to six sentences. This can be any event we talked about in this unit. It could be the Holocaust, Pearl Harbor, any major battles, the Nazis, the concentration camps, the Holocaust survivors, Hitler's rise, and propaganda impact. That's how we did the bow work earlier, guys. And feel free to do some additional research, right? You guys have your laptops, your phones, and add extra newspaper items such as a comic, maybe a weather section or sports section, right? Just be creative, guys. So I'm gonna show you guys my example. Do you have it on up there? So pretty much it said, the war is finally over, read all about it. Added an image, a little summary, it's not the best. Maybe I even looked up the weather during this time. I added a comic section, and I added like a fact section about the Manhattan Project. So be creative, be a little different, right? Maybe add, some, maybe add a colorful picture, I added a black and white one. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to use Google, right? So the rest of the time is yours. We have around, what is that, 40 minutes, Mr. Martin? Yeah, just about. Just about 40 minutes to do it. It's not due today, but I'm giving you guys time to work on it. It's due Monday at the end of your I day, or, right? So this is all on Teams as well. So we're gonna be submitting these through Teams. Any questions? Any questions? No? I'll be walking around if you guys have any questions. You guys want this sample up, or you guys want the rubric, the other? Sample, visual representation. Remember, I, I wrote maybe four sentences here or less. It's five to six sentences, guys. Complete sentences, all right? You guys are summarizing your main idea or the main headline. And if you guys need to look at that PowerPoint, go ahead and just go on Microsoft Teams, it's up there. Yeah. All right, go ahead and use the to work on that. And if you don't have your laptops, go ahead and just get a piece of paper and maybe sketch it out like your draft or something. Where's your laptops? No one brought your laptops? So again, if you have your laptops, you have your laptops. If you don't have your laptops, just sketch out a draft. So when you get home or you have time this weekend to finish it.
I don't want you guys to just drive your phones on TikTok or Snapchat. <laughs> Tomorrow, but it's due Monday. I'm giving you guys time to work on it during class today. So, if you have any questions, go ahead and just raise your hand or let me know. We can pick it up there. Okay. Are we on TikTok right now? <laughs> Anyway, Google Doc, Word, whatever you prefer using. You guys are turning this in through Teams. Google So now they're just working on their newspapers, just walking around. How are we doing over here? Already, you guys have your topic yet? I guess we're just looking at the example. Cool. We have a topic yet? At this table? What topic? Wait, does, does, does it have to be um, World War related? Yeah, World War II related. So everything we've talked about in this unit. Remember the bell works you guys picked? What did you pick? Holocaust? Yeah. You no, guys no, can I talk picked about, the propaganda poster. Yeah, you guys can talk about propaganda. Oh, can I make a propaganda poster? No, so just a newspaper. You could add it. We talk like, about like it, right? Like the newspaper that shows propaganda posters. In here. So What's up? We gotta do. We gotta do that, and we gotta talk about it, or we gotta like. Yeah. So, so when you're doing your newspaper, the main thing I'm looking at is your your summary, right? Mm -hmm. What you guys know about that topic? Uh, Makes sense. So, can I make a newspaper article about the propaganda posters? Yeah. So you're making a newspaper article on the propaganda posters. Yes, yeah. and then I also make kind of like a little propaganda poster. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Is that what you meant earlier? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you guys, how are you guys doing? Or what, will you have a question? No, so I could put my, my title would be in all caps and it would say propaganda in, propaganda across. Yeah, you could do that. Propaganda in Germany. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Screaming at you. Or Go ahead and look at the example. You, the example's on Teams as well. Mm -hmm. What, what uh, topic did you choose? The Holocaust. 
Holocaust, you? My computer doesn't turn on. You don't have a, you have a charger for him? No, I don't have it. Uh, go ahead and just sketch it on a piece of paper and then try to just do it at home or something. <laughs> How are we doing over here? Looking at the sample? What's up? You raise your hand? So we're creating a newspaper, right? So newspapers, what, what does it have in the newspaper? A story, right? Or a headline, right? Main story. So you're going to pick a topic. Could be the Holocaust. Remember the bell work? What did you pick for your bell work? So you'd pick the Holocaust, right? You make a headline for it. And just summarize the Holocaust, what you know about it. Or look at your notes from, what was it, last week we did the Holocaust? Maybe talk about that. Maybe talk about the survivors or what the Holocaust was in general. I could do like verses and so. Yeah, you could be like, or you could be like the Holocaust. You could be like, you could be the beginning of it or the end of the Holocaust. It's up to you. Or in the middle or how harsh it was. What does this do? Monday. Delilah, what's your topic? Um, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor? You know what you're doing? Yeah. All right. Elise, right? Elise? Alicia. I always forget. Sorry. Alicia. What are we talking about? Propaganda. Propaganda, okay. So we know what we're doing? Okay, cool. Brianna, how are we doing? You know what topic? So thinking about it? Which one, what did you write down for your bow work? I'm sorry? Just the war in general? Okay, yeah, you could say that World War II has finally ended just like I did. All right. Anybody have questions? Any questions? Any questions? Good. Yeah. Uh, 47, 247 or 147, 247? Well, that's about it. We're just going to be walking around. We do the lecture. We also did the, we're doing the activity now. That's pretty much it.